In 1994, heavy metal band Pantera shocked the music industry when their seventh studio album, Far Beyond Driven, debuted at number one on the album charts in America. Following the success of 1992's release, Vulgar Display of Power, it was expected that the band would soften their sound and follow in Metallica's footsteps. But Pantera did the opposite, and in doing so, they made music history. Today, let's talk about the history of Far Beyond Driven. By 1994, heavy metal wasn't very popular thanks to the rise of grunge. Metal was even considered a bad word by some bands. Pantera didn't care. Drummer Vinnie Paul would tell Revolver, everybody expected us to write the sellout record and kind of go to the Metallica route with a more commercial sound. That made us want to approach it even more from the other side of the spectrum and be even more extreme. That's where the title came from. We had the name before we even started working on the record. It would be a sentiment echoed by bassist Rex Brown who told Revolver that he wasn't a fan of what was popular at the time, recalling, we were listening to a lot of different shit just to hear what was going on. One day I went with Terry, referring to their producer, to a record store. We picked up Nirvana's In Utero, whatever the F it's called, and listened to that and went, if that's what everybody's listening to, we don't want any part of that shit at all. No thank you, not into it. Heart-shaped boxes and shit? Nope, can't do it. Despite their objection, Brown would reveal in a separate interview with Rolling Stone that the record label wanted something more along the lines of the Black Album, revealing the record company was pushing for something like Metallica's Black Album. We were like, no, that's not going to happen. But the band didn't look too far away from what was popular at the time, with vocalist Phil Anselmo drawing inspiration from the Pacific Northwest, more specifically the band The Melvins, and Selma would also draw inspiration from artist Nick Cave when it came to his lyrics. Due to the success of 1992's vulgar display of power, the band had received a significant advance from their label. Unlike a lot of bands who blow money on recording in an expensive studio, Pantera for the first time in their history recorded at least part of the album outside of their home state of Texas. The Abbott brothers' father Jerry had opened up a new studio in Nashville, so they would end up recording there and doing some recording back home in Dallas. Vinnie Paul would tell Revolver that the first song recorded for the album would be a Black Sabbath cover, Planet Caravan, a track that was in Selmo's favorite Black Sabbath tune. The song was initially intended to be part of a Black Sabbath tribute album called Nativity in Black, with Vinnie Paul recalling to Revolver, we wanted to get it out of the way so we could focus on being heavy all the way through. After we did it, our label had a problem with the other label that was going to put it out, so it never made its way onto the Nativity in Black. But we really liked it, so rather than let it go to waste, we decided to put it on our own record. The band's first song they wrote for the album would be 25 Years. 25 Years would draw inspiration from Anselmo's personal life before Pantera, his dysfunctional relationship with his father. The track 5 Minutes Alone would take inspiration from a lawsuit that the band faced from an incensed Megadeth fan. It was during the band's tour for Vulgar Display of Power they opened for Megadeth, and according to the band, a kid in the audience at one show flipped off Anselmo, and the crowd soon turned on that member of the audience and attacked him. The boy's father threatened to sue Pantera, with Anselmo recalling the revolver. The kid claimed I jumped off the stage and beat him up. There was no witnesses to this. It was absolutely fake. But still, being a person of interest in a lawsuit, it was going to cost me money to get myself out of this problem. The fact that I didn't do it and nobody could prove anything really incensed me. The kid's idiot father told our manager on the phone, Honestly, I could care less about the lawsuit. I just want five minutes alone with that Phil and Selmo. All our manager said to him was, I doubt you do, and he hung up on him. The track Good Friends and a Bottle of Pills would draw inspiration from Anselmo's own sexual escapades, while Becoming would see the band write about having arrived in their career, much like the bands they looked up to. The first single from the album I'm Broken would be Anselmo's Cry for Help. Recalling to Revolver, this is right when I started feeling the pain in my lower back and it felt scary. I think it was one of the first times in my life, man, that I had this thing called vulnerability kick in and this was a very uncomfortable feeling. He later would add, I think this was really my first glimpse into the kind of screaming to the world, effin' I'm broken, somebody effin' help me here. Released on March 22, 1994, the press and probably even fans were shocked at what they saw on April 9, 1994. The album debuted atop the Billboard album charts, making it the heaviest album to peak at number one. The previous week's top charting artist was Ace of Bass with their record The Sign. That was now knocked to the number three spot, while Bonnie Ray's new album Longing in Their Hearts, which came out the same week as Far Beyond Driven, couldn't outsell Pantera, peaking at number two. 
The news that the album topped the Billboard charts was a cause for celebration, but it also annoyed and terrified the members of the band. Bassist Rex Brown would tell Rolling Stone, we were going to the airport the day the record came out, and I picked up a USA Today, and it said Pantera, the overnight sensation from Texas, and I went overnight my ass. Meanwhile, frontman Phil Anselmo was suffering from degenerative disc disease after years of punishing his body on stage. Recalled hearing the news of the album hitting number one during an interview at Loyola University saying, I was pretty terrified. I was happy as hell, don't get me wrong, man. I was like, oh my god, yes. At that point, I had just gotten back from the doctor from having my second MRI done, and I realized I had two blown out discs. Now, in order for me to be the Superman that the media built me out to be, I had to quell that pain. For Anselmo, that meant starting with painkillers and muscle relaxers, then graduating to stronger painkillers and eventually heroin. Vinnie Paul would look back at the album, recalling how it really was the beginning of the end for the band, saying, We were all working together for a common goal. That included Phil. When we did Far Beyond Driven, that was the last time we were all on the same page. He was really focused and we all banged it out, man. It was a tour to promote the album that saw the members drift apart. It was at that point Anselmo had his own tour bus and rarely had contact with the band off stage and was dealing with his own substance abuse issues. It got to the point where the band wouldn't see Phil until about 20 to 30 minutes before showtime and they never knew what kind of mood he'd be in with Vinny adding, that's truly where some of the show started lacking. They weren't as good as they used to be and he used to start his rants and go on for 20 minutes while we stood around and looked at him like, what the F are you saying to these people dude? They just want to hear us play some songs, let's play some music. Despite the turmoil in the band's interpersonal relationships, their business side also underwent some changes. Derek Shulman, who was the head of the band's label, would find a new job at rival Roadrunner Records. Up until this point, Shulman, who was a big supporter of the band, had formed a tight-knit relationship with producer Terry Date and the band's manager Walter O'Brien. If you guys want to check out my story on their next album, The Great Southern Trend Kill, hit the link below in the description box, and we'll see you next time on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.